Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Ike Paz, and today I have a very special guest. I have Keith Wheeler. He is a well-known, uh, extremely successful KDP publisher. He he's uh, published a variety. I can't speak. Sorry, guys. A variety of kids' books, um, and these days he's found a lot of success with puzzle books. On top of that. He has won several um, awards. If you want to know more about him and his past with Amazon KDP, I urge you to check out the information below. I have a link to his course on uh, puzzle book domination. It's really good. But without further ado, Keith Wheeler, how you doing? I am doing great. Thank you so much, Ike, for having me back. Okay. Uh, listen, it's great having you. Last time you were you're one, you're one of our favorite guests. Um, my subscribers loved watching you, learning from you, and you know I'm, I'm very happy to have you back on. It's and again, I asked my subscribers if uh, they have any questions they can ask you. They could ask you, and I have them all laid out here. Um, I, I want to get as much information out of you as possible for people starting out with Amazon KDP or with even intermediate KDP publishers. Uh, how to how to go about it, how to grapple this thing, and how to profit online with Amazon Absolutely. KDP puzzle books. Cool. Okay, so for people just tuning in, don't know anything about anything when it comes to Amazon KDP, let's go through some some basic questions. If you can help okay. us, Keith, what is Amazon KDP? Well, Amazon KDP is a publishing pro platform. Um, pod is what they call it, print on demand, where someone can go. You can publish your book for free. They can find your book on Amazon. They can order it. And instead of doing like what traditional publishers where you have to get like boxes and boxes of books at your house and then ship them, um, they print it when they're ordered. So Amazon deals with all that garbage and just gives you the royalties. So you don't have to deal with, you know, the customer service, taking the money or any of that other stuff. You just worry about, you know, creating your content, publishing it, and then of course, promoting and marketing. So you definitely spelled out the pros there. No doubt about it. You have, uh, you just put in your, your digital goods, your digital yeah. product and Amazon takes mm -hmm. care of the rest. Yeah. What are some cons with that? If you, if you can help us out. Um, one of the biggest cons and it it's luckily over the last, you know, five, six years um, seems to be diminishing is um, there's this, this negative connotation when it comes to being self-published compared to traditionally published. Um, I actually am both traditionally published and self-published, and I can tell you that uh, I prefer self-published uh, for many reasons. Um, but um, so that's probably the biggest negative when it comes to it. Um, you know, one thing that people think is that, oh, well, also, if I self-publish, then I have to do all the marketing and promotion instead of having a company do it. Well, unless you get picked up by the by the big five, you know, traditional publishers, you're going to be doing most of the, the promotion and marketing anyway. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that would be probably the, the biggest, um, negative that I would see. Um, you know, there, you know, some people say that you can't have your books in stores if it's through KDP. I've got my books in over 20 stores, even in cities I've never been in. Wow. Um, so it's, you know, they think it's because of, well, if you get the free ISBN and that's not true, I've seen people who buy an ISBN do it through KDP and then try to get their books in like Barnes and Noble and they still say no. And it's because it's not about the ISBN. It's about being able to return the books. You know, if you want your book in a store like Barnes and Noble, a mm -hmm. physical store, you know, big name like that, they need to be returnable. And that's one reason why going to Ingram Spark, which is still a print on demand, but going through Ingram Spark can help because they actually do have an option for you to allow for returnable books because you know, they only have so much space, you know, shelf space in their stores. And so they need to know that if they spend X amount of dollars buying your books and they don't sell, they can return them and in exchange get, you know, different books. So that's one of the, the misconceptions that I've seen when it comes to, to KDP and, and just print on demand in general. So those are, those are some of the, the negatives that I've, that I've heard and kind of a few ways around them. But what I what I gleam the most important is that you, who's been doing this for years, prefer Amazon KDP, and the uh, ISBN number of serial isn't as important 
as people, some people make it out to be. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I like, I like to buy my own ISBNs um, mainly for my written books um, just because I do publish through other platforms like Ingram, like Lulu, depending on the the type of book that I'm publishing. Um, You know, Lulu I use for spiral bounds, which is really great for puzzle books and things like that. Um, But I like to have my own ISBN because then I, regardless of where I publish through, I can have a consistent ISBN for each of the different, for those versions. So if I have a paperback version on KDP and I use their free one, I can only use that ISBN on KDP. I can't take that same free ISBN and use it on Lulu or use it on Ingram Spark. But if I buy my own, uh, I can use it. I can use it on multiple platforms as long as it's the same, the same version of the book. I so like you. I, yeah, so. Okay, okay. And that's going to get into some of the questions I have for you from some of my subscribers later okay. on in this interview, because uh, yeah, we do touch upon that. Um, so let's let's niche down and uh, let's talk about puzzle books. Uh, something that you are um, you kind of famous for right now is puzzle books and your success with puzzle books. What what is a KDP puzzle book? Um, well, a KDP puzzle book is basically again you create the puzzle book yourself, um, whether you're using software or you're you know physically creating it yourself like we do in the course, um, and you publish it through KDP. And because it's on KDP, it goes directly onto Amazon. Um, it has the best royalties if you do it through KDP, if, you know, selling on Amazon, whereas if you go through anybody else, then, you know, the, the royalties are, you know, there's a middleman in there somewhere, so they got to get their cut. Um, but yeah, and then you can, you know, put your keywords in there to get the Amazon algorithm to really, um, you know, try to give your book more exposure. Very good. Thank you very much. And um, if you were to judge one to 10, one being extremely easy, 10 being extremely difficult, how difficult or what's the barrier to entry when it comes to Amazon KDP? So a lot of people watching this are looking for a a reliable way to earn online. Um, Newbies and intermediate people, marketers alike, and people who are interested in KDP and printables and all that stuff. How difficult would you say it is a barrier to entry when it comes to Amazon um, KDP. Yeah. When, when someone asks, tells me that they want to start publishing a book, I tell them, start with KDP, start with Amazon KDP. Um, the barrier of entry, I mean, you can do it for absolutely nothing. Um, I have plenty of books that I have published um, and, and have been successful, won awards, gotten reviews and everything else that I've done absolutely at no cost. Um, and so, but also it's the easiest platform interface to navigate like hands down i i love lulu i love ingram spark but without a doubt kdp amazon kdp right down the middle is is just super easy super intuitive um you know if there's anything that is a little you know confusing like oh i don't know keywords you know or anything like that there are plenty of ways to find information about that but, uh, but yeah, without a doubt, Amazon KDP is super easy. And then because it goes directly to Amazon, which is, you know, a huge marketplace, it, the uh, discoverability is that much bigger as well. That's so fine. yeah, without, without a doubt, it's, it, it would be my first, it is my first suggestion to anybody who's even thinking about starting in publishing books, start with Amazon KDP, get a couple books out there. And then if you want to try other, you know, other print on demands, go for it, but definitely to get your feet wet in the industry. Um, and with the lowest barrier of entry I've found, definitely Amazon KDP. Very good. Thank you. And with that, uh, what if I wanted to go beyond getting my feet wet and I just wanted to be a full-time Amazon KDP seller in my giving my given niche puzzle books. And there's all kinds of puzzle books. Right. Right. Um, would you, would you say that's, that's doable? Oh, absolutely. I I've known plenty of people who this is their full-time job. Um, you know, they've, they've quit their nine to five. People have asked me, why haven't I? And the truth is, is it's only because my nine to five job pays me really, really well. Um, I mean, that's really, but that's actually, I mean, that's the goal is to get to the point where um, it can absolutely replace that nine to five job and be truly 
truly passive. And I mean, I love writing books, so I'll still be doing that, but it's doing the stuff that you love and getting paid for it, which is, I mean, that's the dream, right? You know, that's not work. Exactly. It's not work. It's uh, the money is the cream on the top. Right. How often should I publish on Amazon KDP if you're just starting out? Um, it, it depends on the type of content you're doing. Um, if you're doing no content, low content, puzzle book type types of books, um, I would ideally, I would say once a month, putting out something new. Uh, because one thing that a lot of people don't know is that, yes, you have a BSR, which is your Amazon bestseller rank which for those people who don't know, that basically is how you rank, how that particular product, that book, how it ranks in the Amazon marketplace uh, amongst all the others in that particular type. So ebooks, That's paper selling. Ranks. Really important. Are, people think of rank and they just think uh, on, the, no, on the listing. It's actually no, no, selling. It's sales. Yeah, it's sales. The, the lower your number, the closer to one. It's kind of like you know the, the music top 40s. You know? The closer you are to one, that means the more you sold. And, and it updates every approximately every hour. They, they change the algorithm from time to time. Um, so just because you were number you know, 300,000 today, you may be number 1 million tomorrow. So you need, that's one reason why you need to really make sure that you, you try to promote as much as possible. Um, but I completely lost my train of thought. Um, yes, you're talking about you need to, you need to be a self-marketer when it comes to your books. Right. What and, was your uh, question? That, that, oh, the question is, how often should I publish? Okay. Yeah. So one, what I was saying is that one thing that you, a lot of people don't realize is there's actually an author ranking as well. Um, and you, if you use um, Amazon Author Central, which again is free to track all your books, you can see what your author ranking is as well. And so if you publish every month, it keeps your author ranking you know, higher, or I guess technically lower because you're closer to one. And so that makes you as an author more, uh, more interesting to the Amazon algorithm and a much better chance that they're going to start promoting your books for you. Okay. So okay. Well, well, I'm sorry, Keith. I have to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgive me for stopping you, but this is, this is blowing my mind. I had no idea guys, time staffs below. This is, this is great stuff. And we just, we just got started. I'm, I'm right now getting into subscriber questions, but anyways, Guys, there's an author rank. I just knew about the BSR. I didn't know about that. And like Keith was saying, if you want your author rank to stay high, you have to be a you have to publish regularly. That makes sense. Okay, I'm so, I'm so sorry, but this is so no, important. it's fine. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so I would say if you're doing no content, low content puzzle books, I would say once a month. Um, if you can do more, you know, more frequently, obviously it's better. But you want to do two things. One, you want to make sure it's high quality content. And two, you want to make sure it's something sustainable, something that you can do long-term because this is, you know, your career, if you know, if you, you want it to be. And because of that, you know, knocking out, you know, I can do one a month and then you do that for like six months and then you get burnt out and then you're done, you know, so you want to make sure it's something sustainable, but if you're doing written books, I would say, you know, publish once a quarter, you know, again, make, you know, it has to do with what kind of content you're doing. Um, you know, and, and what is something that is sustainable for, you know, the next, you know, couple of years, five years, whatever. Um, so that's, that's what it really boils down to. That's really cool. And I got to add within puzzle book domination, I have information uh, about it down below. You make it, you make it very easy for people um, to actually create a puzzle book with free tools. And um, I think, once a month that that's not difficult to do wouldn't you say no, when it comes no, to puzzle no. books no when it comes to puzzle books no not at all um you know you can w- once you're creating them and you know you get familiar with it just like with any new new skill when you learn something new it's going to take you a little bit longer but once you get into it um, no i mean i i technically if if i could do it sustainably with my lifestyle you know i've, I've got for people that don't know i'm uh, I've got, you know, four grown kids and, you know, grandkids and all the other stuff. So I got a lot going on, um, you know, plus a YouTube channel. So if I could do it sustainably, I could probably knock out one every other week um, easily without, without feeling like, you know, I'm being crunched, you know, as far as time is concerned. So it's absolutely doable. And then when you add, you know, I, now my course shows you how to do things yourself, um, but I, you know, I'm completely honest in the course and completely honest anytime I get interviewed, but I use software as well. 
Um, so, but even if you were to just do everything hundred percent manually, still one a month, completely doable without burning out. Yeah. And to add to that, uh, for people watching, um, what Keith teaches, as far as I know, and I I've seen it, maybe I'd like to think I've seen every, uh, puzzle book software, uh, out there. He teaches puzzle. Most of his, most of his puzzles you cannot find on, on software. Um, unless right. you know better, Keith. No, that was that was actually one of the one of the reasons why I started doing the the course is because these were ones that you can't find anywhere in any in any paid software that I have found. Um, you know, I I mean they're not the ones in the course are not your normal like your Sudoku's and your you know crosswords and stuff like that. No, this those there is software for and everything else. These are now granted when some software you know creators get a hold of my course, they might, they might start making software that does it. But, uh, but as of, as of when they're in my course, no, there's, you know, there's no other software that, that offers that. And that's one of the cool things about your course is that you keep on feeding it new puzzles. And uh, this is one of the reasons why we're talking right now is that there's some new puzzles um, within puzzle book domination. And, you know, you know, people, might might think that oh this must be a kind of subscri- uh, subscription model where I got to pay every month for for this for this type of content but no you offer it at a one time deal which is really cool and again um, I'm seeing it you're you're adding more value um, every other couple of months and you know this is really helping people and again just to stress all the puzzles within uh, puzzle book domination. Uh, these are actual puzzles that Keith is selling on Amazon KDP. So they're proven. It's not theory. So, you know, really important. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was one of the prerequisites is it had to be something that um, didn't exist in any other, you know, paid software um, for commercial use, as well as it had to be something that actually sold for me. Um, that's how I, cause I mean, I've got a way, you know, a huge list and that's how I narrow it down to what actually goes into the course is it has to be something that's actually sold. Really cool. Really, really nice condition there. Um, how much time on, again, we're, we're getting into the sub questions. How much time on average before it begins selling puzzle books? Before it begins to see sales from um, it really, beginning? Yeah, I hate, I hate to always say this generic answer, but it really depends on your niche. Um, I mean, if, if you're in a niche that, ha- first of all, if you put out just a, you know, a, a plain, I don't say plain, but um, a very generic puzzle type um, and a very generic niche, like not really set to anybody in particular, then it's going to be a lot harder to sell because it's going to be a lot harder to be seen than if you do, you know, a, a puzzle book for tennis players, you know, um, that has, you know, tennis terms and things like that, which I don't know anything about tennis, but um, so I can't give you any examples, but, um, but if you're in, you know, if you're in a niche that's um, that doesn't really have a lot in that particular, you know, like tennis for puzzle books or whatever. I mean, I've had books that I, I got the, the email that it went live and I got sales within the first 24, 48 hours. Yeah. I've, I've experienced that myself. And yeah. to your point, uh, there are thousands of um, Sudoku type keywords, but if you can find a modifier to that, or, or let, let, let me give you a better example. Like you said, tennis or baseball word search, instead of word search for kids, word search for adults, Baseball yeah. word search is very specific. You know who you're talking to. You know they like baseball, and you can assume a bunch of other things. So uh, good stuff. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, let me see here. Do you pu- okay? And this, like I said, goes back to what you said earlier. But I'm going to ask it anyways again. Do you publish to other platforms, and are you allowed to? So if once you publish on, but you answered it with the ISBN. But if you can uh, repeat that again. Um, Am I allowed to publish on other platforms like uh, what did you say? I, I, I Spark, Ingram, Ingram Spark, Ingram Spark. Um, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, please. Okay. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, um, you can you can publish your print book anywhere. Uh, you know, there there are no exclusivities. Even if you you know pe- people may have heard of oh on KDP they've got this option for KDP Select and blah blah blah. That's just eBooks. You know, that has nothing to do with print books. Print books, you can publish anywhere. So you can take your same book that you published on Amazon KDP. And if you want to publish it on Barnes and Noble directly, so you don't 
you know, so you get higher royalties, then you can do that. Um, you can, you can go to Ingram or you can go to Barnes and Noble press and go onto their website and you can upload it there as well. Um, and so you don't, you can publish in multiple places. Um, uh, Lulu is a great place if you want to do spiral bound. Uh, one great thing about spiral bounds is, and I actually have one around here, but a uh, great thing about spiral bounds is there's, you know, one issue I've seen uh, in some comments, not on my books because of the way I have them set up, but um, where people can't use all of the page because of the, the crease, you know, where the, where the spine is, you don't have a spine with a, with a spiral bound notebook. So it lays flat. People can fold it the other way. Um, now, the, the only issue with that is Amazon doesn't link, uh, doesn't let you put a spiral bound on their page or um, it, which is weird because they, they carry spiral bounds, but yeah. anyway, um, but it's, it's not a Lulu thing. It's an Amazon thing. But what I do is I actually, you can do two things. Um, you can just sell it on your website and get a higher royalty um, or you can uh, open up a seller's account and then do it that way. But um Okay, but guys. That's, time, that's time a whole nother, That's a whole nother, <laughs> that, I say that that could be a whole nother show right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So there's two ways to do it. You open a seller's account or sell it off your own site. And let me add to that. I sell. This is a different market, but I sell printables online, and you can get a lot of traffic on your own. You know where the traffic's coming from, and margins are way better when you're selling off your own site. And I think that's across the board. Um, you were talking, this is interesting. You're talking about spiral bound and pu puzzle books lend themselves to spiral bound because you want to get to the edges when you're doing those right. puzzles. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, like you said, you can't directly uh, host your, uh, uh, your puzzle bound, your Lulu puzzle bound, your puzzle bound books on the Amazon. That, that's a problem. But there's a new um, not platform uh, type of uh, book you can publish now that a lot of people are asking me about hardcovers. Hardcovers. And uh, what's your experience with that, sir? I actually have a uh, hardcover right here. This is a hardcover book from Amazon. Um, a amazing quality. I'm, I was super impressed. I'm not going to lie. It's not a puzzle book, obviously. Um, this is actually one of my viewers' uh, mystery book for children. Um, but the quality, I'm highly impressed. It's called Case Wrap. Um, obviously doesn't have a, you know, doesn't have a, uh, a dust jacket. Um, but yeah, case wrap, they, the, the fly leaf that's in there. Um, I, I don't know if anybody knows, but this right here, this little extra page right here, it's called a fly leaf little trivia right there for you. Thank you. I had um, no idea. Yeah. That's actually, um, I was impressed. That's, that's almost like cardstock thickness. Okay. Uh, yeah. Almost so car almost cardboard and that cardboard, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. like, like, uh, like invitation, like an invitation yeah, paper. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so, um, especially for like written books or whatever, any, any kind of book that you want to, to sign, you know, like if you want to give it as a gift or whatever, um, having it in the hardcover with that fly leaf, that thick fly leaf, you can write on it without worrying about it leaking through. So it's, that was really nice, but overall the, the hardcover quality, I'm really impressed with the Amazon KDP. Very good. And, uh, that, you know, now that hardcover is here, how long before, in your opinion, maybe never before Spiralbound gets here? I mean, to Amazon KDP. Um, I would say, honestly, I would be surprised if they do, simply because the hardcover didn't surprise me. Because if you ordered, um, if you ordered through, let's say you published through Lulu and you, it was a hardcover, and then you ordered it on Amazon, Amazon was actually the one sending it out. So it was clear that they had access to hardcovers. They just weren't allowing us to, to publish them through KDP, but it was clear that they had access to that. The fact that, um, that they're not, you know, you, you can't order spiral bounds directly through them tells me that they don't have access to that. So if they ever do add that, it would be a, it'd be a while in my opinion. Cool. I see. So in your estimates, not, not anytime soon. Yeah. Not anytime soon. How much time should I spend? Okay, we're jumping around here. How much time should we spend on KDP SEO? When, when, when you're publishing a book and the guys, one of the beauties about Amazon KDP is you don't have to worry about off-page SEO like you would do with a blog. No links, none of that jazz. Uh, Amazon's the world's biggest e-com site. Um, Built-in traffic, buyer traffic. 
all you have to worry about is on-page SEO. Is it difficult or, I'm sorry, back to the question. Excuse me. How much time should I spend on KDP SEO? Um, if you're doing no content and low content books, um, I would say as much time as you spent creating it, you should spend at least half that much time doing the SEO because that's that's your biggest way. And it really comes down to how much do you want to market and promote it? How much of your time do you want to spend doing it after you've published it? Because that's what you're that's what you're weighing out is the more time you spend on the SEO, then the less time you have to go do all the grunt work later. And you can work on working on your next book. Whereas if you just want to just throw words in there, that's fine, but you're going to have very little um, visibility. And then you're going to have to spend that much more time trying to promote your book or just let it sit there and, you know, try to get organic sales. But if you really want to get, you know, maximize your sales uh, potential, then you really need to spend a good deal of time on your SEO. And you know, your keywords, your basically what they call your, your metadata. Um, so your, your title, your subtitle, your, you know, if you're doing a series, your description, and I know people are gonna say, well, Amazon, the, the algorithm doesn't, doesn't, you know, index what's in your description. No, but Google does. Uh, yeah. And that's true. So, you, your listing does uh, rank on Google. Right. Right. So, I mean, there, there are my books that you can look into, you know, search a certain keyword in Google and it'll pull up my book up front where it's like, I, I didn't even do anything on the Google side. It's all within Amazon KDP. Really cool. Uh, yeah, it's basically a question of doing your due diligence, doing your research. And uh, would you rather climb a mountain or use a ski lift? And, you right. know, when you're there and you have the, all the pieces locked in, it's much easier for everyone with that free traffic, especially. And, and easy for you to do. You know, yeah, yeah, it's I mean, easier. it's, I mean, it's not like you have to like jump through all these hoops to, to put in keywords or anything like that, uh, or keyword phrases, I should say, because people, some people think that uh, keywords means just one or two words. And it's like, no, nah, stretch that bad boy out, you know? And that's uh, that's a perfect segue to the next question, which is more specific about this topic is um, one of, one of my, one of my subscribers asked, how are you filling up the seven keyword slots? What's a good formula there, sir? <clears throat> That is a great question. Um, I will tell you, if you've heard of uh, Dave Chesson, Kindle Panur, um, he did an amazing um, study with, I was like almost 200 different uh, authors and they basically just gave him um, information about their books. And what he found is that for three or four of your keyword slots, you want to put in just the words that, um, that really are very narrow to your book. Like the example you gave before is um, baseball puzzle book, you know, and just leave it at that. Just, and then for the other three or four slots, fill them in as much as you can. So try to fill in those, you know, those 50 characters for each one. Um, and the reason why is because there's two different things. There's, there's indexing and then there's ranking. Indexing is what happens. Anything you put into the keyword slots, your book is indexed for. And that just means it's going to show up. Now, whether it shows up on page one or shows up on page 100, that's the ranking. So you can put children's puzzle book and it, it'll, it'll index for it. So if someone types in children's puzzle book, your book will show up, but it's going to be buried with all the other books. So that's why you have some of your slots where you fill it in as many words as you can um, that, are, that are relevant. That's the most important thing. Because Amazon, your Amazon ranking, um, where it shows up, it has a lot to do with your relevancy. Uh, because Amazon cares about the customer. They don't care about you as an author. They care about the customer. You know, I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. And, so, and so they want to give the customer the best experience possible. So they want to show them whatever's the most relevant. And so, um, so when you fill in the slots with very specific, you know, um, baseball puzzle book and people type that in, maybe you'll get less people type it in, but when they do, your book's going to be up towards the top. So yours will rank higher, but um, all the other words you put in there will, you know, those will also index, but again, you might not be on page one. Like, like tags uh, yeah. and keywords. Okay. The keywords and tags at the same time, fill it up, fill up 
fill up all the slots with with uh, the words that relate to your book. Um, and uh, not only will you index, but you also show up for for those other relative words, key, uh, keywords. Right. So so just to be clear, the, the, the formula is um, take three of the seven slots that you have and put and use it just for specific keyword phrases that is the most relevant to your book. So again, in our example, um, baseball, baseball puzzle book, okay. baseball puzzle book, and, and leave the rest of the characters blank. It's, it's fine. So it's not going to be anywhere near your 50 characters. That's fine. Um, so do that for three out of the seven. And then the other four slots, you will fill in with more words that pertain to your book, but may not be as profitable. Like if you use publisher rocket, you know, um, so because what the algorithm does is it, it moves words around. But the more it has to move things around, then more it chances. seems like it well, well, no, but the more it moves it around, then it's like, okay, if I had to move it around, it's not as relevant. So it's going to show up lower on the list. Oh, okay, so again, okay, okay. so it's indexing, but it's not going to rank high for it. But if it doesn't have to, it, if it doesn't have to do any switching around, then it's like must be relevant because this is exactly what they put in there. And so those are the ones you're going to rank higher for. Okay. So the first three slots you make them target, I mean, very specific to you, to your book and the other four, uh, you want to be more loosey goosey with them, but still, but still stay relevant. Yeah. Yes. yeah stay relevant. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Um, no do you promote all, sorry, do you promote all your books? I guess when they mean uh, by promote, I mean, I guess they mean advertise. Do you yeah, advertise been... all your books with Amazon ads or just some of them? What, what's your story there, Keith? Um, I promote, I don't promote all of them. Um, I definitely only promote, if I'm going to promote for a series, I promote one book in a series, um, because they, they self promote themselves, you know, yeah. they cross promote themselves. And so, um, I don't see a need in doing more than one in a particular series. Uh, it depends on how my sales are going for that particular, uh, that particular niche that I'm in. Um, it, if, if I'm, if I'm doing really, really well, then sometimes I'll run ads just to do that much better. Um, and also if, if they're not doing as well as I think they should, you know, and, and that just comes with knowing your niche more. Um, but, uh, but I definitely don't run ads to all of them. Um, I don't, I, you know, I'm, when I do run ads, the key for me, even more so than, than, you know, should I do it or not is do I have time in my schedule to check my analytics for my Amazon ads daily? If I don't have time for that, I don't run ads because okay. I want to be as I want to be as efficient as possible with my with my money that I spend. And so I want to make sure that I'm, you know, that I'm I'm giving enough time to at least every at least once a day, look at my analytics. You know, are there any keywords or brand or products, depending on what kind of ads I'm doing? Um, are there any that are just eating up my money but not giving me anything back? Um, are more importantly, or just as important, are there some that are doing well that I can put more fuel on and, you know, add some, you know, maybe increase my, my cost per click or increase my, my daily budget to make it so, you know, it do, do even better. So I do run ads to, to some of them, not all of them. And like I said, uh, if I'm, and I always do a series with my puzzle books, um, I, I will only do an ad to one in the series. Okay. So you have a very nuanced approach. Actually, we talked about this in the last video we, we did, you and I. I'll have a link to it down below. Um, so, yeah, basically, if you're making some sales on its organically and you want to bring it up to the next level, you'll you you know you'll, you'll spend some, some money on that for those advertising. But you're never going to spray and pray. You're never just going to yeah. throw money at it and see what happens. Uh, you, you want to make sure that whatever you're doing is calculated and with intention whenever you're spending money uh, on these exactly. ads. Very nice. Thank you. And again, guys, uh, we talked about this before. Check out the link down below for that as well. Um, so uh, one of my subscribers is, well, she she says you're, uh, you're a great teacher when it comes to Amazon KDP. And uh, she was talking about um, kids books versus adult books. And which one should I target? Let, let's talk about puzzle books for those. Okay. Uh, for this example, should I be creating kid puzzle books or adult puzzle books? Um, my short answer to that is yes. Um, I, I do. I do both. Um, and you know, again, you you want to niche down. I mean, everybody loves puzzle books. You know, um, 
it, it doesn't matter what their, you know, what, what their background is, adults, kids, they all enjoy it. Uh, what's going to change is the, the length of your puzzle book and the complexity. That's really what's, what's going to change. Um, I mean, there are, you can make easy Sudokus, you can make easy word searches, crosswords. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I would say when you're first starting out, it, it depends on what you feel the most connected with, because you want to do, I mean, K Amazon KDP makes it easy to, you know, to, you know, barrier of entry as minimal as possible. Um, so I would say when you're creating your, at least your first puzzle book, do the same thing, you know, pick something that you're familiar with. So um, if you're more familiar with, you know, children's type niches, then, then do a children's book. If you were, you know, if you've got a bunch of kids running around, you know, at your house, then obviously you're going to know kids, you know, better and be more comfortable with that. Then yeah, then do those. Cause you know, you've, you'll know what kind of things they'll be interested in. Um, and the same thing about the, you know, the niche within there. So you don't just do a, you know, a kid's puzzle book. You do a kid's puzzle book about, with dinosaurs or, you know, trucks or whatever the, your niche is going to be. Okay. Um, but yeah, go ahead, please. I was going to say, I was going to say, your but, passion. but if you're, I could talk book about books all day long. Um, but when it comes to, you know, if, if you're more comfortable with, with doing puzzle books for adults, then, then do that one. Again, you want to try to, minimize the barrier of entry on yourself as much as possible when you're first starting out. Okay. Make it fun, exciting. And there is a paintbrush for everyone on Amazon KDP. You can do so much. Right. And uh, the same person asked me this question uh, about low content books. And I'm going to ask you the question because, you know, it's there, but uh, I want to make a distinction, guys. Puzzle <laughs> books are not low content books. Okay, puzzle books are mid-level books. They're not as easy to create as a journal, a journal per se, per se, or calendar, or whatever the hell. Uh, but I'm going to ask you, anyways: Are you creating low-content books currently? Um, currently, as in like the last year? No. Yes, yeah, the um, last I, year. Just yeah, I, I, I mean, puzzle books. Yes. Any other like journals or anything like that? No. Um, have I in the past? Absolutely, with success. But uh, puzzle books, you know, one thing that I like to do is um, when I'm doing something, I try to pour my focus into it um, instead of like spreading myself out too thin to where I'm, you know, doing a bunch of different things. Okay. I want to do good quality on one particular thing. And I found the most success doing that. Um, and so, uh, so puzzle books have been my, my thing for the last probably 18 months. Um, so I haven't done any like journals or anything like that. Okay, uh, that that's uh, that's a very honest uh, answer there. So uh, he, you're not focusing on low content books anymore, and um, yeah, this and also the the answers you've given me, you know, they're, they're very uh, thorough and comprehensive. So I'm I'm going to go into some more specific questions that I'm getting asked here. Um, what is a uh, talking about your business? as a KDP publisher, because you're a business, you're a bit, you're an artist because you create these types right. of books, but you're also, you have to market yourself and you also have to take care of the business side of things, pay uncle Sam, um, yeah. do all kinds of things. So I want to talk about that because some of these questions I never thought of asking you, but they're coming from my subscribers. What is the best software to use to manage payments uh, or, or like uh, to to get a, a snapshot of your sales, you know, like the back end stuff. Yeah, the back end stuff. Um, I would say when it comes to software, I've heard good things about um, uh, QuickBooks, but I'll be honest, I, I don't use it um, only because it's something that I've not I'm not familiar with, and I just have so many things on my plate that I don't um, I didn't don't have the time to just jump in and learn something new. In fact, I have a, a product that I bought, uh, Affinity Publisher, that I bought like a year ago, and I know it'll help me. I know it'll make things easier instead of using PowerPoint and things like that, but I just I just haven't had time to get around to it yet. Um, so I, I use Excel personally. Um, also, depending on how much money you're making, this isn't really software, but depending on how much money you're making, um, you can go to uh, getbookreport.com and you can use uh, that re book report and it's free up until you start making, I think it's a thousand dollars a month and then it starts charging you. Um, and that gives you a, a really good way to not only see the, um, the sales that are coming in,
but you can actually group things. So you can group like all your, you know, tennis puzzle books together and see as a whole, how's that, how's that niche doing? So there's a lot of uh, flexibility that you can do with that. Uh, but as far as the software, I use Excel. Um, on a personal note, I'm afraid of using, what was, what's it called again? The it, It's called, it's called book report, but yeah, you, book, it, book report. I'm, I'm book afraid report, to yeah. use it. Yes. Uh, See a lot of people use it. I, I just don't want to Amazon, you know, I'm, I'm under Amazon's thumb. If they, someday they don't want me to connect my account with them with yeah. uh, book report. I'm a little iffy on that. I, a lot of people do. I, I guess I'm, I'm the weirdo here because do you use them? I, I do. I do use them. Um, I, I don't use it as much anymore. Um, but, uh, but I mean, the, the fee isn't, isn't that bad, but, uh, but um, I will tell you that what book report has really done is it's and it's even better than than using it, it itself is that it's putting pressure on kdp to make their analytics better and that's what i like because i i'd rather just stick in in amazon yeah. kdp and not have to go to all these other things yeah, who and so right and so KD, amazon kdp is doing some amazing things and i think it's because of sites like uh book report so yeah and that's why i'm hoping for i know you're saying spiral bonds not coming out anytime soon <laughs> but be, but I, I'm, that's why I'm hoping for Spiral Bond. Anyways, um, okay. So I had this uh, subscriber ask me about LLC. If you can quickly explain what an LLC and as a KDP publisher, do I need to form an L LLC? Excuse me. Um, okay. So let me just start with a disclaimer that I'm not a lawyer and I don't even play one on TV. Neither um, am I. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but an LLC is a limited liability corporation. Um, so basically you're starting a a corporation. Um, and the, the point behind it is it's, it makes it separate. It separates the liability between your business and you as an individual. So let's say you create an LLC and call it puzzle book LLC. That's generic, but anyway, um, and something happens and you get sued, the LLC gets sued. And worst case, you lose everything that's under the LLC, but you don't lose you know, your house, your car, you know, all that other stuff. So that's the the legal reasons why people do it. Um, do you need one? No, no. Um, do, is it a good idea to get one? It depends on where you are in your business. I would say if you're at the level where you're making, you know, a thousand, a couple thousand a month, then you may want to look into it. Um, it also is going to depend a lot on what niches you're in. You know, obviously if you're in niches that are uh, more prone to, being sued, then, uh, then yeah, you probably want to do something like that. Like if you were, you know, like, you, you know, doing anything like around health, but of course, puzzle books, you don't have to worry about that. But like, if you're doing uh, written books and journals and stuff like that, that um, could be giving like health advice or legal advice or anything like that, then you definitely would want to form some kind of protection between you as an individual and the business just in case there's any kind of legal ramifications. Um, but, but if you're just doing puzzle books, I don't see a reason why, um, unless it's for tax purposes, if there's tax reasons why you do it, go for it. Um, but yeah, but that's, you know, yeah, that, that's, you know, that, that's understandable. It's a, it's an umbrella uh, against the, the rain <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, the rain might come. I, I got the Japanese equivalent of it. Uh, but like uh, you said at the end of your of your statement, it, it's it's more about taxes for us. My my wife insisted that I, I get the Japanese equivalent of an LLC. She's my accountant. So yeah, uh, yeah uh, there you go, guys. Um, in the states, you know, a lot of legislation, a lot of people suing each other and all this stuff. So you might want that, but you definitely don't need it. Right. Uh, tax purposes, perhaps. Okay. Well, and and then other people. Um... If you, you know, you may want it just so that way, like when, if you buy your own ISBNs and, and you can have, you know, your bit, you makes you look a little bit more professional. Um, I, I've heard people use that as an argument as well. So, but to answer your question, do you need one? Absolutely not. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. And no uh, yeah, that's you, you've explained so much. You've given a lot of information, so much value. Um, and I, you know what? I hate the word value. Everyone uses it for everything, but <laughs> the, just the, the amount of content, the amount of uh, pro tips. I mean, I learned so much about the about about the author rating and 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 how if you the more you publish, 
the more consistent your author rating uh, stands to be, which is really cool stuff. Guys, I'll have timestamps down below. I, I want to talk a little bit more about puzzle domination. This is Keith is Keith's flagship course where um, you don't have to pay and nothing has changed. You don't have to pay uh, a recurring fee like, uh, like other programs. There are zero upsells. And the best part, like I said earlier in this video, uh, in this interview, excuse me, Keith will, will feed his course more puzzles, give you what's actually working right now for him, an established author. You know, so Keith Wheeler is, he's an established author. And uh, a lot of people are very happy and he gets a lot of glowing reviews, even from my subscribers. Um, anything you want to add to that? Anything uh, you think people watching should know about you, about your course? Let us know, Keith. Um, yeah, I mean, the uh, the course in particular, um, it's called Puzzle Book Domination. But just so people are clear, it's not just puzzles. I mean, there are games in there. You know, um, one of the things that, you know, my daughter, when she was playing softball is, you know, there'd be, you know, either a sibling or, a, you know, teammate riding with her. And they wanted something to do together. So I wanted to make sure that it's it's not just puzzles, like for just solitaire, you know, purposes. Although there are those in there, and they're going to be a lot more that I'm working on. Um, but there are there are games where kids can play, you know, or adults, you know, can play two people at a time. Um, and so that's something. But you know, puzzle book and and activity book domination was just too long of a name. So um, <laughs> yeah, you so could, put, yeah. yeah, 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 that works. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's that's. Yeah, games, puzzles. Um, yeah, I mean, and in fact, I even show you how to create a custom game for your niche. Um, and and I don't use in the course. I don't use any niches that I'm in. Um, so I literally, it's not like I just show you something I did. I you actually watch me research and create everything in the, um, and that's just just an added uh, an added thing in there. But no, I really like that one, and I was I was going to talk about that. I believe that's a golf course one, correct? It is. It is. It's I really like that. And, uh, you know, um, I can see why, uh, you know, this is a powerful way to convert your books. And I'm sorry if I'm looking at this as a, from a marketing standpoint. No, but absolutely. Yeah. 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 This is this is really cool stuff. He also teaches you how to create your hardcover, not your hardcover, not how to create your covers, excuse me, and uh, how to create these puzzles using nothing but free tools. Of course, he also talks about software that he likes, Keith, what, what Keith likes, but, uh, the, the the bulk of it, uh, I'm not sure, but I'd say over 90% of it is how to do things for free, how to create uh, activities, games, puzzles that you won't find on another course, inside another course, or on a software. So yeah, very good stuff, Keith. I'm very happy to have you. I always learn a lot from you. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. No problem. Again, Glad to be here. Yeah, cool. I, I'll have this information down below. And uh, I guess we'll hopefully we can have you back on sometime soon. Sounds great. I, I love talking books. So absolutely. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Don't forget to Bye. like and subscribe. Bye-bye guys.